Hey, you're not going to get away from your little sister. Running at the moment you see someone's face like that? Where the heck have you run off to? I have no reason to tell you where I'm at. I'm asking you to please not run after me, all right? Huh? I wanted to get away from you as quickly as possible. I don't ever want to see your face again, so just stay away from me. Why are you even at a place like this in the first place? I'm thinking the same thing myself. Why would my older sister be coming out of an apartment building as gorgeous as this one? This is not the kind of building some poor person like you should be seen at. Huh? Who did you just call a poor person? I'm talking about the person who had her fiancé stolen from her by me. <laughs> You are a no-good loser who lost their CEO fiancé to a younger and more pretty little sister. You lost your chance at becoming rich to me, and now you have no money because of it. Yet now you think you can be inside an apartment building that's way too much for you? I was coming up to you just then to ask you what was going on with that, but you ran off the moment you saw my face. The second I walked out of my apartment building, my eyes met with the one woman I cut ties to. I couldn't even say anything because of how surprised I was, and my only choice was to run. I literally cannot look at your face anymore without wanting to vomit. It's very rude to run away from someone the moment you see their face, especially when they want to talk to you. I happen to be married to a CEO now, and am considered royalty to some. Everyone sees my face and comes running up to me wanting to talk. <laughs> so the only person that thought it was okay to run at the sight of me was you. I heard rumors from others about how you and him finally got married, but I didn't want to think any of it was true. <laughs> Even now, Frank is just drooling over me. He made the right choice leaving you for me. He tells me all the time that he's so happy he let me have him as I'm way cuter and prettier than you could ever be. I guess the seat as the wife of a CEO has always been reserved for me. <laughs> Is that so, Fiona? Then tell me what your oh-so-happy CEO husband was doing with you. He was standing out there, not even bothering to come in, just staring at the apartment building. Oh, you're going to ask about that? <laughs> Actually, I'm being invited to this really fancy party that takes place tomorrow on top of that apartment building. <laughs> A party, huh? It appears that one of the people that Frank works with is living on the top floor of this apartment building, in the penthouse, right? <laughs> and well, everyone that works with my husband's friend, or is friends with him, of course, will be there. <laughs> so the two of us will be coming back tomorrow to attend said party. I feel amazing knowing that the two of us are being invited to a celebrity's party located in a penthouse way up there. So you're saying the party is tomorrow, right? Why were you here the day before looking at the apartment building like that? We just wanted to see what the place we'd be partying at is like. This is our first time seeing this place, so we wanted to make sure we knew what we were in for. If we had no idea what the place was like, then we might end up coming to the party tomorrow underdressed or something. <laughs> hmm. So you both are really wanting to make everything go perfect tomorrow. Well, of course. <laughs> A company owner and his wife are coming to the party tomorrow, and we need to look good for being such high-classed figures. <laughs> I want to make sure that I'm wearing all the right attire tomorrow in order to not embarrass him. Also, it would be nice to become the standout couple at tomorrow's party as well. I'm sure that I'll already be a sight for everyone's eyes as I'm going to be the youngest and cutest person there. I see. So that's the reason you both were just standing out there looking up at the apartment building? You both looked like celebrities in your nice fur coats with sunglasses on looking at a place as high-classed as this building. I was afraid you both might have been undercover or something like that. Excuse me? <laughs> we are not faking being celebrities as we both are the real deal. Did you know that the sunglasses I have on right now are worth $3,000? <laughs> Is that so? I was really shocked to see you coming out of a building like that, though. 
So now, would you tell me why you were in a place like that? A loser like you would never be able to afford a place inside that building. Ah, perhaps you've begun working part-time as a delivery man? <laughs> huh? Now that I think about it more and more, you are walking out with that massive cooler box, right? You must be doing some kind of food delivery now. And you were just here delivering food to the wealthy. <laughs> Well, if that's the case, then I guess I can see why you were inside such a gorgeous building. <laughs> You've got it all wrong. I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but I happen to live in that apartment building. And there is no way that could ever be the case. I'm sure you're just lying to me now because you don't want to look like a failure in front of your little sister. <laughs> what did you say? It must be such a struggle for you to have to carry food all the way up and down that building stairs. <laughs> but I guess that this is what happens to those that lose their CEO fiancé to another person. <laughs> You've fallen so far now that you have to work part-time as a food delivery guy. <laughs> well, I hope things go well for you moving all that food around and that you someday can move up in the world. <laughs> Millie, I know you said you'd be home late, but you're all right. You said you're going out to do some shopping, but it's been over two hours now. I'm sorry for making you worry, Max. I got a little bit tired and took a break at a cafe downtown. Right now I'm getting that shopping done, though. Oh? Are you starting to feel a little bit sick or something now? If that's the case, I can go out shopping for you instead. You can stay at the cafe and take all the time you need to rest. And on the way back from shopping, I can pick you up. No, that's all right, Max. I ran into someone I really did not want to see, and that kind of stressed my head out a little bit. I finally calmed down now, though, so I'll get to shopping now. Is that what happened? But you really don't need to stress yourself some more to go to the store. I can do all of that for you while you relax. I really am fine now, so you can let it go. Now, I have something I'd really like to ask you. For tomorrow's party, did you invite someone by the name of Frank? Frank? Ah, yeah, I happen to have only met him just recently. I was introduced to him by one of my colleagues, and recently he's been doing some work within my company for us. Also, he's been talking with me about getting himself a penthouse to move into. So I went ahead and invited him to come to my party if it was all right with him. I see. So you happen to know about him through work, then? Do you know anything about him? I already happen to know his name, so maybe you've been around him before? You know about that story from my past where my previous fiancé was stolen from me by my little sister, right? Actually, that previous fiancé of mine is him. What? Are you sure? Just a little bit ago, I ran into both my little sister and him in front of our apartment building. She began to brag about the reason for her being around here being that she was invited to a party taking place in this apartment building tomorrow. I wanted to make sure that couldn't be possible, but it is, isn't it? You really have invited the two of them to come to your party. You're lying, right? There's no way there could be such a coincidence. Really, I don't want to see either my sister's face nor my ex-fiance's face. But if Frank happens to be someone you're working with in the business world, then I'm going to have to deal with him again. As an adult, I'm just going to have to put up with this, but deep down this is going to hurt me so much. Millie, you really don't need to force yourself tomorrow. I can let everyone know that you're not feeling well this time around. Then you won't have to show your face at all and can find somewhere to relax until the party's over. And as for the preparations of the party, I can handle them all myself. I can't just not show up for a reason such as mine. Everyone wants to meet me as well since I'm your wife of all people. Also, I've already gotten started on a lot of dishes for tomorrow that I'd like to finish up when I get home. I really would not feel okay giving you all of that work when you already have enough responsibilities as it is. I guess I'm not as great at cooking as you are. A lot of the people coming tomorrow have met with you before and 
are excited to eat some of your cooking. Already, a lot of the guests are telling me that they're coming on an empty stomach just for you. If there are really that many people coming who want to see me and eat my cooking, then I'll have to suck it up and push on. I promise to not run and hide tomorrow, and I'll stand my ground in front of her and Frank. I'm sure once those two realize I'm your wife, then things won't end up as bad as I'm thinking. I happen to be the wife of a very famous businessman, and I have to uphold that image as well. Thank you, Millie. And I guess you are the wife of the party organizer as well. So, you feel as though you need to be there to help out. Just know that I'll be around to protect you during the party if anything does happen. Also, this might be the perfect chance for you to show your little sister who you've become. That's right. I really want her to see what's become of me, and hopefully that changes the way she views me. Alright then, I'm going to get this shopping done, and I'll be home very soon. I'm going to put my all into cooking tonight so that everyone is happy tomorrow. Hey, Fiona! Why have you kicked me out of there? You open the front door right now for me! It's your fault for coming to a party you weren't invited to in the first place. <laughs> I saw that you were done delivering all our food, so it's time for you to get out, you moneyless loser. Huh? I never thought I'd see the day where a food delivery person thought it'd be okay to sit down in the party after dropping the food off. Did you think that because this party is full of the rich and affluent, you could stick around and find yourself a new man? <laughs> The fact that you still think you have a chance at finding yourself a rich man is kind of something I never saw you trying to cling to. I am not some food delivery person and I'm not here to look for a new man. Now open the front door right now so that I can come back in. If you don't do that for me right now, things will not turn out the way you hoped. Oh, but this is all I've hoped for. <laughs> The only people that are allowed to be at this party are those with money and those who are famous, right? You meet neither of those requirements, so you're not allowed. <laughs> you always keep trying to talk down to me like I'm nothing, but I'm not having it any longer. I am not some poor loser like you think. I belong in that party more than anyone else in there right now. Huh? <laughs> You think you belong in here when your little sister stole your fiancé from you and you were fired from your last job? <laughs> Go ahead and keep dreaming because you've lost your job, your money, and your love a long time ago. Dreaming? You must be so jealous of me. <laughs> but come on now, it's been two whole years since I stole Frank from you. I think it's time you just gave up on trying to get Frank or any of the other men here and faced the truth. I get that you will still want to believe you have a rich CEO fiancé and a good job, but both of those things are gone. <laughs> You're living a huge lie now and you need to realize that. I feel so bad for your confused butt that I'm starting to laugh about it. <laughs> I'm telling you right now to quit it with all that BS. I am really about to hit my limit with you. I was trying so hard today to act like an adult about this, but you are making all that really, really difficult. Would you cut it out with all that whining and just go home? This is not the kind of place a poor person should be at. And to think you actually thought it was a good idea to sneak your way into a party in the penthouse of this apartment building? What an absolute freak. This is my husband's penthouse. Huh? Stop lying. <laughs> a loser like you would never be able to get married. Now you think you're married to a man that owns this penthouse? Get your head out of the clouds, idiot. So, this is the kind of treatment my wife gets. What do you think you're doing kicking out the wife of the party's organizer? What? I'm gonna have my wife take a break in a separate room now. I don't want her anywhere near a rat that is breathing the same air. I had to ask one of the guests who owns the room below us to let her in, in order to have a place to rest her head. Thank goodness for them. Wh what is this? Who are you? Why has the tone of all this changed so quickly? Unlike Millie, you really are the devil in human clothing. 
I happen to be the one putting this party on, and Millie's husband. I'm sorry, but the person you called a loser just now does happen to be married. What? I'm sorry, but it's time for you to go. I no longer want to see neither you or your husband's face around here. So would you both please get your jackets and leave my place at once? Wait a second. What? You're joking about being the organizer of this party, right? Uh, um, my older sister's husband. That, that has to be some kind of a joke, right? Get out of here, right now. Do you understand my English? Or would you rather me call security up here and have them drag the two of you out? I could do that for you both, right now. What? Once my wife is feeling better again, I want her coming back to this party. But before that can happen, you both need to be gone. What's going on here, Millie? Why do Frank and I have to be the ones getting kicked out of that party? And why are you the wife of the party thrower? You already heard from him, right? We've been married now for a year. No, no, no. There is no way you got married to anyone. I am not going to sit here and listen to you tell me such bullcrap. Huh? Be because two years ago, you had your fiancé stolen from you by me, right? You should have never been able to recover from something as intense as that was. I thought for the rest of your life you would have been trying to get back with Frank or something. Yet within a year, you were with a completely different man? And what's even more unbelievable is that your husband has so much money that it's not even funny to joke about. No way, no way, no way. You can look away from reality all you want, but this is true. You're trying to tell me that you're married to a man who can afford a penthouse like that? I already heard about him from Frank, but he appears to own one of the most sought after companies in this city. Why would you be able to marry someone like that? He shouldn't be the kind of person to fall for some moneyless loser like you. There were just a lot of coincidences. After you stole Frank from me, I lost both my job and my place to live. So out of fear of losing everything I still had left, I picked up the first job I could, which happened to be at my husband's company. And I'm still working for him, although now I'm the head of HR. So this was an intercompany marriage then? Normally it's frowned upon to marry someone else within the same company, but he made an exception for me and kept it a secret. Huh? What the heck? How did he keep your guys' marriage a secret then? This is like some kind of drama. I think the same thing sometimes. But this is his company after all, and since I was the woman of his dreams, he made some exceptions just for me. But to think that this random job I found would lead to me marrying the CEO is wild. There's... there's no way, though. But what's really crazy is that I'd soon learn that his job is somehow related to Frank. This world really is pretty small, huh? What? What should I do? What should I do? So you're telling me that I just kicked out the wife of one of Frank's most important partners? That's what it looks like. That's why I told you to let me back in, or else things wouldn't be going as you hoped. Well, if you knew something bad would happen, then you should have explained everything to me earlier. Then I would have let you right back into your place. But that wouldn't have happened because you never care to listen to what I say. Now go ahead and explain all this to Frank for me. You might be able to learn whether or not he's still into me as well then. I was able to get the party to end early today, and on good terms with everyone else that attended. Are you feeling any better, really? I'm going to clean all of this up now myself, so keep relaxing in your room for me. I'm sorry, but it looks like I just couldn't manage to stay at the party until the end. Also, Frank happens to be someone related to your job, yet he had to be kicked out. This might not look good for you in the eyes of those that have no clue what's going on. That's not going to be a problem for me, though. So don't worry about it. Actually, thanks to you, I've been able to learn a whole lot about Frank and the company he runs. There was something about how he wanted my company to join his, 
and he'd be there to protect it. Huh? What do you mean by that? After today, I was able to learn a lot about him. Because that, I've been saved. When I'm done cleaning up out here, I'll explain all of it to you in further detail. I want you to clear your mind and rest some more for now. When I'm done out here, I'll be joining you to rest my head and talk. Please, Millie, do something to get your husband to understand what's happened here. Tell him to please not throw out the contract. We were so close to having signed. What? Frank? I never would have thought someone like you would end up with Max. I have a lot to ask about how that happened, but now's not the time for it. Right now, I need you to please talk your husband out of canceling the contract. If he goes through with it, then my company's gonna fall apart. Well, I've heard about all that from him. Recently, your company's been looking for help, right? So you asked my husband to send some men from his offices over to help you out, right? Recently, there have been a lot of sloppy people applying to work for me. Not just that, but a lot of the people I already have been quitting due to it been too busy and stressful here. Because of that, a lot of the work that should be getting done here ain't, and I'm losing all my partners. That's why I had asked one of my friends to get me in touch with another CEO that might be willing to help my company out. But to think that yesterday of all days would be the day that all my hopes and plans would fall apart. This is all you guys' fault that my company is on the verge of collapse. Excuse me? What did you just say? This is all our fault? No way in hell. I know that the reason you can never keep all your experienced employees and only the idiots want to come work for you is because you're a terrible leader. What did you say? The way you flaunt your business to all the people that want to join you and the way things really are run there are completely different. You even lie to them about the pay they'll be getting only to pay them 65% of what they should be receiving each month. Also, you have all your employees working more and more hours a week without ever giving any overtime. I know that even some of the people my husband sent over during the first month all ran off saying they couldn't work in your climate anymore. Well, that's because your husband only sends me his most spineless employees and never any of his good ones. I asked him to send me employees that won't complain about the environment and only want to be there to get work done. And all he's been sending me is complete garbage. If he keeps that up, then I really won't be able to keep moving forward with this company. I do not want my company going under when this is the company I put all my time and effort into. Well then, change the way you work your employees and make it an environment that they actually feel cared about in. Give them all raises and make sure they actually get time off. That would be a great place to start if you want decent employees staying with you. Are you an idiot? If I do that for all of them, then my profit's gonna start falling and I won't make as much money. I should be able to do what I want with my employees, and they should be happy I'm paying them at all. So stop screwing around with me by suggesting I pay them more and give them time off. I can't wait to see your company go. Although it's pretty much sunken by now. What? I'm so happy my husband cancelled that contract with your stupid company. Well, good luck now, and I hope you're able to find some way to exploit the rest of your remaining employees into getting the work done your company needs to survive. Luckily, you have my most amazing little sister with you to help out. Maybe make a last-ditch effort and hire her to go work for you. Ah, and then the two of you can run that company straight into the ground together. Uh, no. No way. There, there's no way that'll happen. Uh, really? Uh, I, I'm so sorry for saying all those stupid things to you just then. Uh, look, I want to apologize to you for everything that happened in the past, so... Uh, can you please get your husband to help us more? Don't ever talk to me again, you screwed up waste of a man. My husband's company is far beyond whatever crap league you try and operate your company in. What? Now have a great time. And let my little sister know she's not welcome around me ever again either. Right after the talk I had with Frank, he went to his company and got all his employees together to talk about the state of things. But just before he could get anywhere with the meeting, two members of the state came into his company and told him to shut it down due to multiple compliances regarding the way he worked his employees. And you could say that that was the final trip that caused his company to come crashing down. I heard one time from my little sister saying that she wanted me to come and help her because the place she was living was close to being lost by both her and Frank. 
but right after receiving that message, I went ahead and blocked her, relieving what could have been more stress to me. My husband said that it was a real saving grace to learn about the man Frank really was before committing to that contract. Had he signed on to it and started sending more of his employees to Frank's company, who knows what world of hurt his company would have felt. When it comes to parties that my husband plans to throw, he said he's going to run all their names by me before inviting them for the time being. 